For the final lesson in module one, what we're going to go ahead and take a look at is just the import functionality within Autodesk Inventor, which is called AnyCAD. Now, to import any file, you don't have to go through anything major. You just hit the Open Folder button. Now, within the Open Folder button, what we're now going to do is we're going to set our file types to any or all files. And you can see through the list of the all files here that you can that you can pretty much import just about any kind of a file type or solid generic file type that you would like to import. It is recommended that if your customers are going to send you a generic file that they send a step file. That seems to come in the cleanest as far as generic solid models go. Other than that, I would strongly suggest that you tell your customers whether they're using Pro Engineer, CATIA, NX, or especially SolidWorks, to just send you their SOLIDWORKS file or a copy of the file itself. Now I'm going to set this to all file to demonstrate the AnyCAD capability. I'm going to navigate to my AnyCAD folder here for which I have a CATIA part and a SOLIDWORKS file that I'd like to AnyCAD import. Now you can tell that these are a .sldprt file which is a SOLIDWORKS part file and a CATIA CATP part file. Let's go ahead and open the SOLIDWORKS file first, and you just open that file. Now, when you import that solid file, this is the AnyCAD import dialog box. Well, what this does is this gives you some options to be able to filter how you want to convert that model or bring it in. Now, by default, it's automatically selected to convert that solid file. What you can do with AnyCAD though, and if your engineers internally are using SolidWorks because Inventor's easier to use than SolidWorks on your shop floor, you can maintain the reference to the SolidWorks model. Now what you'll notice is that kind of gets rid of a few options down here, and the reason why is because you're no longer going to be saving your own solid file. You're also no longer going to be translating those surfaces or or features within that part file into an inventor file. All of the CAD and the design inside of the CAD is going to stay within the SOLIDWORKS file. Now the selections tab allows you to load the model before actually committing to being able to import the file. There are certain things that you can do and if there's an assembly or some complex designs you can turn on or off solids as you need here before you hit OK. Back to the options folder, we're going to go ahead and keep this as a SOLIDWORKS reference and we're going to hit OK. And just like that, we have the AnyCAD reference within SOLIDWORKS. And you can see that that's denoted here by the icon next to this solid file. Now, we can not necessarily make a lot of changes to this part file because this is actually controlled within SOLIDWORKS. And if I navigate to that folder, and open this in SOLIDWORKS, any changes that I make to this file and save it within SOLIDWORKS, like for instance if I were to suppress features, and this is an extreme case, but you saw that I got rid of basically half of this part design, and if I come in and save that file, When I come back into Inventor, you can see that this lightning bolt has appeared. That's ba basically telling you that you need to regenerate your part. There's something changed. So if the engineer makes any changes, my downstream workflow will automatically change within Inventor. And just like that, that solid part has changed from what the designer or engineer has changed inside of the workflow, or maybe there was a revision change, to automatically change and cascade down into my inventor part file. So this also works for CATIA files and I won't be able to show you a CATIA reference as I just did with SOLIDWORKS but you can see just by going up to the file open if I open a cat part this CATIA file gives you the same option let's go ahead and convert this CATIA file Let's select it first, we'll load the model and see what it is, and I can see that it's okay, it's just a simple solid part. It's not, you know, anything uh, major, there's no missing faces, it's actually coming in pretty clean, and I can just hit OK, 
and that has changed this to a part body and you'll notice the difference here is that there's no reference to it that means that I can come in and I can change anything I want inside of Inventor as I would in an Inventor design now this pulls and locks out any associativity to the master part file which for job shops that's going to be the case anyway so nine times out of ten for job shops I would highly recommend just importing and saving the file on your own versus maintaining the associative the associativity with uh, with the SolidWorks file I'm gonna go ahead and undo what I did here resave that file just to show you once more that when the file changes that any CAD associativity maintains there within that part file now again this works for just about every single kind of solid file NX as well um, and when you're importing those parts just remember it's just a, a simple open the file navigate to it find that part file and within this, this is going to be an NXPRT file so I'll get a quick uh, preview of it let's open the assembly and I can maintain the associativity again come in load the model and in this case we have many part files and what you can see is this gives me the opportunity to be able to turn on or off those part files so if I wanted to just import one portion of this assembly and this is one of those uh, more important things is I can right click on it I can select it there are certain things I can do but I can turn them off here and let's say I just wanted these two base pieces or let's just say this bottom base piece to, to import and program I can turn off everything except for the base. Once I select OK, I only have the base part within my assembly design to be able to work in Inventor and Inventor HSM.